Hello, my name is Yuna Park, and I am a second year student in the Masters of Science in Modern Human Anatomy program at CU Anschutz. Today, I will be talking about the uterine gains, using a game engine to develop a 3D digital female reproductive tract to aid in anatomy education. The abstract for this project was accepted for a poster presentation at the American Association for Anatomy Conference in April 2020, but this was canceled due to COVID-19. Before we get started, I would like to point out my email address and Twitter handle up here. If you have any questions later on, please contact me through either of those. I would also like to direct your attention to the right side of the screen. You can download the Digital Female Repro mobile app anytime during the presentation using the QR codes on the right. It is free and available on both Android and iOS. Currently, cadaveric dissection has many limitations, such as high cost, time-consuming labor, limited availability of cadavers, and lack of qualified instructors. To address these challenges, alternatives to cadaver-based instruction, such as plastinates, are routinely used as supplemental teaching resources. Plastination is a process that replaces water and adipose tissue with polymers. This allows the long-term preservation of well-dissected cadaveric specimens. Plastinates are also non-toxic and can be handled without gloves, making them extremely convenient for students. However, there are a lot of disadvantages to plastination, such as high production costs and high maintenance costs. And ultimately, this leads to a limited number of plastinates available for anatomy education. Currently, the Modern Human Anatomy program at CU Anschutz has one plastinate of the female reproductive tract, bisected to show the internal anatomy together with the external genitalia and urinary bladder. Here is the donor's right side, and here's the donor's left side. I will be referring to these as the right and left plastinates from now on. The bisected plastinates are oriented in the images such that they are opened up like a book. So that anterior is on this side for the right plastinate, and anterior is on this side for the left plastinate. Posterior is down the middle for both of them. And so they're basically opened up like a book. And also, the right and left plastinates are the same size. The left plastinate seems smaller in the image because it was photographed at a lower magnification level to show all of the structures. If we take a closer look at the plastinates, here is the bladder in dark green, the uterus in blue, which shows anatomical variation in that the uterus is retroflexed, the vagina in red, the labia minora in purple, the labia majora in orange, the left ovary in pink, the left round ligament of the uterus in light blue, the right and left ureters in white. And in addition, if you look at the uterine fibroid here in light green, the plasma also shows pathology, which is very interesting. And it's also important to note that the donor was a geriatric female. This accounts for the one-to-one -one size ratio of the height of the uterine body to the height of the cervix. In a female of reproductive age, the ratio would be two to one instead. Since we only have one plastinate of the female reproductive tract, it is very difficult to incorporate it in a large class size. As a result, implementing a 3D digital model may accommodate large class sizes without damaging the actual plastinate. And so the aim of our project was to iteratively design and develop a mobile app depicting a 3D model of the plastinated female reproductive tract. Development of the resource was divided into two parts. The first part consisted of processing the 3D model, and the second part was iteratively designing the mobile app. If we first look at how the 3D model was processed, the plastinates were first surface scanned using the Artex Space Spider scanner, shown here in the top left corner. The scanner created a 3D reconstruction of the plastinate. Here is the right plastinate, and here is the left plastinate. Due to the high quality of the scanner, the 3D reconstructions had very high resolution. And the large amount of detail was actually distracting, so we smoothed and refined the models in ZBrush Core, which is a software that allows you to digitally sculpt 3D models. 
The models were then imported into Maya, which is a computer animation and modeling software, where they were textured to look similar to the actual plastinate. And within Maya, each anatomically identifiable structure was broken apart in the models for easier processing later on. After the model was processed, the mobile app needed to be iteratively designed. We first started with a low fidelity prototype and just kind of drew the layout of the mobile app on paper. Then we moved into Unreal Engine 4 to create the app itself. Unreal Engine 4 is the same game engine that created Fortnite, which is apparently a pretty popular game these days. And this is a screenshot of the Blueprint's visual scripting system in Unreal Engine. Rather than traditional coding, the mobile app is made by linking nodes together. All of this was eventually packaged into a mobile app. Some key features include being able to rotate, zoom, and pan the model, and being able to touch the model and see highlights and annotations. Upcoming features will include a quiz and a learning module for students to follow. Here is a quick clip of how the app works. The first thing you see is a screen showing how to navigate the app. This is what the user interface looks like. You can rotate and pan the model. You can also toggle the visibility of the models if you want to focus on just one. You can use the zoom slider to take a closer look. And if you touch the model, you can read about the anatomical structures. If you press the reset button, you can return to where you started. Overall, the mobile app depicts accurate human anatomy and any anatomical variations or pathologies. Digitizing plastinates may be a method to address current challenges in anatomy instruction. And future directions include evaluating how well the app works as a supplemental teaching resource. And we are also hoping to create more apps that will include 3D digital models of other plastinated specimens. I would like to thank everyone who assisted me with this project, especially Dr. Royer for mentoring me, Dr. Orr for allowing us to use his scanner, and Hannah and Chelsea for initially dissecting and processing the specimen for plastination. And of course, this project would not have been possible without the donors at the Colorado State Anatomical Board. Thank you for listening and please contact me through Twitter or email if you have any questions.